Now this video that you're about to watch needs to come with a big disclaimer. So if you're a little bit sensitive towards the authenticity or historic status of classic cars, now is your excuse to leave. This here is a Porsche 911 and it is being electrically converted by EDUB Services in partnership with Electric Classic Porsche. Welcome to this video. My name is Kit Lacey, founder and director of EDUB Services. And yes, today we are going to spend a video talking through how we go about electrifying these gorgeous vehicles. And we take what the kit is in front of you and stick it into a Porsche 911. And we're gonna show you just how straightforward and simple it is for our crew here at EDUP HQ in North Yorkshire in the UK to carry out this process. And also if you are in the Porsche market or the car restoration market and you're interested in offering Porsche 911 conversions to your customers and get in touch because this is showing you what actually goes into that process. So grab yourself a cup of tea, take a seat and let's get into it. So you may recognize this vehicle, although maybe not, because the last time you saw it, it was a completely different color and had all of its panels connected. This is the orange Porsche from our previous videos. If you want to see anything that's gone on with the videos so far, go back into our archives and, and check it, that out. But this has been carried out a uh, kind of full restoration and paint job by um, our partner garage, Chasing Cars, just down the road. Um, and it's come back to us ready for, basically its next step is it needs some uh, balancing and wheel alignment. And that can't be done until the full weight is in the vehicle. So at this stage, this is kind of perfect for us because in an ideal world, this is how we receive a vehicle. It's got no doors, it's got no bonnet. We can get to everything, it's great. Um, so at the moment, the first thing that we need to do is we need to run the looms through the center of the vehicle. So it's a split pack, as you saw from the pictures at the beginning. You've got a front battery box and a rear battery box and a load of things in connect interconnected between those two. So we need to make sure that we run all the looms first while we've got tons of access. So we get all the low voltage looms, the high voltage looms um, for both the battery box connection and also for our low current accessories like the charger and the DC-DC converter and the heater and the AC system. And then we also uh, run our coolant system as well that's keeping the battery pack nice and cool. So that's step one, is we get all of that run through first um, and then we move on uh, after that into actually getting some of the bigger stuff in. So in order to get the high voltage through the original heater tubes, you need to first of all thread something through to then guide it back the other way. Now we use 35 mil HV cable because it's kind of perfect combination of strong and flexible to get round the corners and not kink in the tubes. Uh, so we thread it through from front to back first, then we get the 70 mil, the actual cable that's gonna run, tape it to it and pull it back through the other way. So while Joss is taking care of putting the AC cables through the body panel, uh, just creating a few grommet panels on the back where there are no longer any cables needed. I'm getting on with the front battery box that's kind of scarily suspended in midair right now, and it's just gonna go in the front, because basically we need to get that in first. It becomes a bit back heavy on our lift, so it's always good to get the front battery box in first. Um, it's a lot more straightforward, a lot simpler, um, before we start messing around with anything at the back of the vehicle. So that's my current job. It's gonna go over the top, over the side of the vehicle, and it's gonna lower onto our custom subframe, which is picking up off the petrol tank mounting points underneath there as well. Um, and then that subframe also holds our air conditioning um, system as well, um, but it's all kind of going in, in that order. So next step is to get the floating battery box into the vehicle. So this is day two of converting the Porsche 911 to electric. Um, an update, we've spent probably about a combined 10, 12 hours so far on getting the vehicle to this stage. Uh, that's involved running all of the looms through the vehicle and getting the front battery box now fully installed. That's all been connected uh, with the access panel on the side um, and it's uh, been loosely connected underneath and just needs kind of all the bolts putting in to actually hold it nice and steady. Um, like I say, our looms are all through right now. Um, Joss is just finishing off getting the final 
um, AC loom for the charger run through. But yeah, we've still got the, the larger box here, which is going to go in. Once the looms are all fully in, then we can start focusing on the rear of the vehicle um, and getting the rear box in as well. Uh, but let's see how we get on today. So now the battery box is in. On the front, that's all been double checked and it's just then uh, fastening up the four bolts on the bottom. And I don't know if you can see from here, but the frame that we've created to mount this in is picking up off original mounting points from the Porsche. So we haven't drilled or modified the Porsche at all. This is all bolted, which is really important. So now's the stage of getting the rear battery box in place. So uh, Joss has put in the battery coolant and the drive unit coolant and the charging VCU system into the wing. Um, and again, all picking up off original bolt holes, all the coolant pipes are in and kind of out the way. So the next step is to get the main box up and into the vehicle. Easy. So there you are, that's the rear box in. In fact, not quite. We do have to do up um, the bolts uh, to hold it in, but it's really important that you get it as close as possible before you pinch it, because otherwise, especially putting copper grease on, on those bolts in the corners, because we've made this mistake. If you try and raise up too much of it, just on bolts at the final end of it, then you end up welding the bolts closed. Um, so everything's, and this is as high as it sits. Um, your charging socket in this one CCS1, but CCS2 as well in our other models, comes in line with the vent that's on the back there, which we can adapt. Um, there are so many different vents, we don't have a universal part for those, uh, but we can custom adapt those vents to allow for a little hatch if you wanted to. Um, under the back here, so remembering to get our high voltage through the back of these large spacers on the, on the rear here, that's holding all the weight off the original engine mounting holes. Uh, we've got all of the, the coolant and the looms, um, and the four to six mil cables coming through on that side, they get pinched over um, in a moment. And then flipping the camera around again, we've got our high voltage coming through from the front box that needs to sit up the top there. Um, and we are, yeah, really nice and snug. So very proud of getting to this stage now. This is as far as you get for the most part. So like I said, we've got a bolt in. There are two big bolts that go up where the gearbox used to mount. Those are a pig. <laughs> could be so careful we're getting those two bolts in and I can't tell you how many times we've put fresh bolts into those holes and the holes have been full of crud and just a little mistake and you've minced the hole um, so many times so yeah being really careful with those two front bolt holes the two back bolt holes and once that's in that's the brunt of the electric conversion taken care of So this is our third day working on the Porsche, um, but we're now into the section of just basically connecting everything up. So all the looms are fully uh, connected to the right lengths and, and labeled up and then, but because of how they go through the vehicle, you need to fit the right sockets then on the end of them. They won't go through the vehicle with sockets on. So it's just simply a job of going through the systems, connecting up all the sockets on the other end of both the high voltage orange cabling, but also the low voltage cabling as well and getting those connected up and out the way. Uh, very shortly, we're gonna be having the wiper motor fitted back in again so we can then get started on our HVAC system and getting the charger and DC-DC in mounted as well. Uh, so we're gonna start muscling on with that as our next stage. So one thing that we have to notice when we're installing at this stage is um, there's obviously very fine adjustment with the positioning of the uh, electrification system and the original vehicle itself. And all of those vary very slightly. Um, so we have to try and go with what's normal and what's stock. And then if there are any kind of adjustments around that, we have to make those. But one key thing that we have to be aware of, which is what we're doing right now, is the entire subframe is on slotted holes forwards and backwards in the vehicle. So we've got no adjustment left and right, but forwards and backwards we do. Um, and so what that means is that if we don't, we kind of test it first time and then we see if anything's getting in the way. And in this occasion, we have actually got some collision um, on the shock absorber um, 
against the bolt, only when it's completely up in the air. So at the very kind of last inch of it being raised, um, the shock absorber is just touching one of the bolts on our subframe. Now, that can't stay for obvious reasons, um, even though it's going to spend most of its time under load and weight, but you've got to account for those occasional times you might get some air <laughs> over potholes on British roads. Um, and so we have to allow for that. So what we're doing right now is now we've kind of got it all looked at. The, the adjustment is we can get the weight um, on the subframe onto this pallet truck, and then we can slide the entire um, subframe system back in the vehicle because it's at the front of the slots at the moment. Sliding it back in the vehicle will give us clearance on this angled brace on the back here, and that should give us the clearance that we need. So it's little things like that that need paying attention to as you're fitting it. So once all the main bits and pieces are in, um, we need to get the air conditioning system in. So smuggler's box uh, where the steering rock is. I mean, I'm not. I've got my coughing. Dex do it. Getting the AC compressor into smuggler's box. We've got the uh, radiator underneath. We've got the dryer that's just been positioned down the back there as well. This is all kind of preset um, with certain clamps and certain fixings. We've got our blower unit in there where the original blower unit used to go. Um, so it's just kind of connecting that all together, but you leave that till reasonably towards the end so you don't get it tangled up with all the rest of your pipes. So now the vehicle's been fully assembled and has been out for test drives, we've put all the final bits on the vehicle um, and started to really thoroughly test it and make sure that it's all uh, fully kind of signed off against our sign off sheet, uh, ready for delivery to the customer. But I'm just going to show you what that looks like when it's all kind of put back together, because obviously until this point, it's had some bits missing, um, mainly because obviously you want to make sure everything's fitting properly, make sure everything's working properly before you put in the effort of fitting bonnets and things like that that might not fit. So interior in this particular model, um, the seats are now back in, um, the dials are in as they were before, seat belts are all in of course for when we're driving, we need to make sure those seat belts are in so that we're safe as we're driving. Um, this particular vehicle is having a new interior done once it's delivered, so it's not too much of a problem um, of how it looks right now, we've just got it all together and all functional. Um, obviously as well making sure all of the lighting and things like that are working because we are getting very close to some of the original 12 volt systems that run the lights, so we need to make sure that they're all still working as they were, uh, safe for road testing. Um, in the front, Bonnet is now fitted, um, so that's going to, well, makes driving a bit easier. Uh, in the front here, so again, a couple of custom things like this particular customer wanted some kind of front storage, um, so we've got that fitted for them here. But yeah, you've got your battery box in, uh, ECB in, charger in, all the things that we showed you in the video. So all these things, like the charger, for example, just sits on a little bracket um, over the top of where the um, air conditioning system was underneath that so that's all been fitted once the air conditioning is all together so again there's a little stage where you get your air conditioning filled and tested before you then fit the charger just because well the charger is a, a five minute job to put on at the end of it um, but you don't want to have we've had air conditioning refill garages where um, and you might have one of these facilities at your at your location which is absolutely fine but we don't so we go somewhere else for AC refill um, and sometimes they ask a few strange questions so we just go let's just keep it easy and <laughs> make it really accessible um, so like I said this is a it's a left-hand drive Porsche this one so the uh, filler systems are just underneath the charger where the smuggler box used to be um, what you've also fitted again because it's having a lot of interior work done, I think the customer who's stateside to us does have all of the tubes and the fittings for the um, airflow system. So we fitted ours um, kind of adaptions onto there with the tube connections um, and the customer will fit his own tubes to connect everything together. He's already got those, so he's going to take care of that um, separate from us. Um, 
and everything's obviously fitted. So every, bonnet's all on, we make sure it's aligned properly, make sure it doesn't catch on anything, and that all works absolutely fine, it's all great. And then in the back, um, all you're looking at here is having the, the boot lid fitted. Um, so again, we have fitted quite a smart little, because again, you don't need the vent anymore here for airflow. It's not needed anymore. Um, so we have the option for the customer if they want to. So some of them can keep that grill, which is fine. You can see the charge point um, through the grill, which is quite cool. Um, some people talk about fitting their own little extra kind of flap so you don't have to lift the whole bonnet, to, the whole boot lid to charge it. You can just lift that flap. That's fine, we just haven't made one of those yet, but it's obviously possible because we've lined it up with that flap semi-intentionally. Um, but this one's just got a kind of, uh, it's an aluminium uh, plate painted black with chrome trim uh, that's on the back there that I think works really, really smart. And it's another one of those things where people look at it and they go, that's something different. I need to know more about what's going on. And we like those little things. Um, in the back here, so yeah, it's all kind of covered up and cleaned up. Um, You've got uh, our kind of mounting points at the bottom there that are all kind of torqued up and ready to go. Cooling systems on the left here are obviously all now filled. So you've got drive unit cooling and battery cooling. Um, drive unit, we have tests for drive unit cooling to make sure the system's running properly. We have tests for battery cooling to make sure those are all running properly as well. Um, and in the back here, that's pretty much all there is because you've just got wiring looms uh, connecting um, around those places. Um, so, And then again, making sure the, the lid here is fitting properly and is not catching on anything as it goes. But that now means that this is what the Porsche looks like in its kind of finished version. Um, all together, all working, all driving. And the next step is to go out for full road tests, signing off that sign-off sheet and making sure that everything's working as expected before delivery. So this is the mystical sign-off sheet that I mentioned earlier. So what we provide with all of our vehicle and sign-offs is just one of these that's kind of giving you main trigger points for uh, what needs to be checked over when you finish a conversion. Um, so you've got, some of them might seem a bit strange, but they're deliberately intended to highlight and to pick up off problems um, that might be highlighted when the conversion is finished. Um, so they're things like your cooling testing, they're things like uh, rapid charging testing. There are also things like testing that um, when you're at the uh, top of the pack, so when you're at 100% that certain things are featuring and working as they should be um, or not working as they should be and, and also similar at the bottom of the pack. We have a ton of extra safety features in there about things like charging interlock and error signals. So we have some things where you can put on a fake error signal on the battery management system and kind of ensure that other things aren't working as well. So this gets provided with, um, what is a template, um, but it's something that can be signed off by uh, the team doing the installation. Um, while they're going through uh, the process. And then also we have digital copies of this. Um, and then what we normally advise is just for a kind of liability standpoint is that this gets included in the paperwork that's handed over to the customer because it's all dated and signed by technicians to say there are things that have been done on the vehicle. Um, we always find, especially if the vehicle is not undergoing a humongous restoration under, under your uh, kind of jurisdiction. If all you're doing is the electric conversion, there are of course lots of things outside of the electric conversion to do with the classic vehicle that you want to make sure that if there are ever any questions or any thoughts, um, you've got those, we, we've all had it, where we've got kind of nervous customers who take it out on the road and they hear a noise or they hear a rumble and, and you and them need to know that um, you've taken care of the electric conversion as, as kind of uh, as securely as possible and then it helps you to identify diagnosis for, for other problems like that as you go down the route. So the sign-off sheet is something uh, really important to be included just before um, you deliver it to the customer. So the purpose of this video has been to highlight some of the key areas of the electrification process for the Porsche 911. And we really hope that as you've been able to follow through this video, it's really helped you to understand some of the ways and methods that the uh, Porsche 911 electric conversion needs to be carried out. It's one thing to have a good set of documentation and to have some support, but we found that having a video itself is also a really great way for you and your team to get your uh, heads around the process that's been uh, designed to go alongside the EDUB conversion system for electric acid Porsches. If you need any more assistance aside from what you've already been provided with, our aim is to make sure that you have support every single step of the way. So please reach out to your distributor or out to us directly through electricclassicporsche.com and we'll be more than happy to assist you. We wish you all the luck with electrifying classic Porsches.